A Chinese booster has just exploded in low Earth orbit, creating a new cloud of space debris. Do we know what caused the explosion? Do we know where the debris is going or what kind of threat it's going to represent? Well, the Chinese aren't talking because, frankly, they don't give up. And as a number of you may have noticed during the recent launch attempts with Artemis, there were a number of times where they had a no-go situation because of potential collisions with space debris, a situation that didn't exist during the Apollo era. Yeah, that's right. When they're doing a go, no-go poll, there are a certain number of periods of time, only a couple of seconds each, but nevertheless, dozens of them within your average launch window when they can't launch a rocket for fear of colliding with a piece of space junk or with a satellite, and China just made the problem even worse. Just how bad is it? We're going to find out, because I'll tell you, the bliss that I was feeling when SLS took off, well, that's gone, and it's time to get angry. <laughs> Ah, oh, that sucked. Let's try that again. It's time to get angry! All right, let's go ahead and get on with the story. You may have noticed a telltale wisp across this particular piece of footage. You're going to see it again here in just a moment, and it may be kind of remarkable to you to think that something in orbit, something man-made in orbit, can actually create something like this, but it is indeed true. It looks like some sort of fuel dump. In actuality, even though the person who filmed it initially thought that it was some kind of satellite fuel dump, it was in fact a Chinese Long March 6A rocket breaking apart in low Earth orbit and the fuel getting spread all over creation. And yes, you can see that in the night sky if you happen to be looking at the right moment. It also created a large cloud of debris which was also visible. And the U.S. Space Force confirmed on Saturday that a Chinese rocket stage broke up at least 500 kilometers over our heads on November 12th, creating some 50 new pieces of space junk around the same altitude as where the number of Starlink satellites are flying, and also, of course, where the ISS flies. As of 2021, that is to say before this incident occurred and also before the Russians created a huge problem in low Earth orbit, the Space Agency Surveillance Network was tracking more than 15,000 pieces of space debris larger than 10 centimeters across, and it is estimated that there are about 200,000 pieces between 1 and 10 centimeters across, and of course millions smaller than 1 centimeter, all of which could theoretically present a problem to anything in low Earth orbit. This, of course, includes the ISS, includes all of these nice, fancy new satellite constellations. Now, look, I don't have a problem with the fact that this event happened. Accidents occur. It's as simple as that. However, what I do have a problem with is the fact that the Chinese aren't saying anything about this, aren't offering any sort of data or information on why it happened or what kind kind of impact this debris might have, nor of course are they offering to clean it up. And this is just going to get worse and worse as long as they continue their bad behavior. And this started with the worst ever space debris event in January 11th, 2007, when the Chinese military destroyed the Fengyong 1C weather satellite in a test of an anti-satellite system. This created more than 3,000 fragments of debris, which is more more than 20% of all space debris. And on January 22nd, 2013, ironically enough, the Russian laser ranging satellite BLITS or Ball Lens in the Space experienced a sudden change in its orbit and its spin, and scientists had to completely abandon its mission. The culprit was believed to be a collision with a piece of the Chinese Fengyong 1C debris. Fragments from Fengyong 1C, Iridium 33, and Cosmos 20. 
2251 account for about one half of all debris below 1,000 kilometers. Now, a lot of you may know about the fact that the United Kingdom is committing 100 million pounds over the next three years to try to mitigate space debris. I had an interview with the UK Space Agency about this particular issue, but their efforts are going to be paltry and ineffective against incidents like this. They're looking to deorbit a couple of dead satellites, not thousands of pieces of space junk. We need to start taking more definitive action and start holding countries like the People's Republic of China accountable for what they do. And the United States is not totally free from guilt. We tested our first anti-sat weapon in the 1950s and the last in 1985. However, we have learned from our mistakes and stopped this nonsense, whereas other countries most definitely have not. And aside from a disaster scenario like the Kessler Syndrome, this creates many, many other problems. The ISS routinely has to perform debris avoidance maneuvers, and back in the days of the space shuttle, the space shuttle windows often had to be replaced because of damage from collisions with debris smaller than one millimeter. As a matter of fact, one of the solutions back in those days was to make the shuttle fly tail forward to protect the forward crew compartment from the debris menace. And guess what? The crew dragon doesn't have a tail, or the whole damn thing is essentially a crew compartment, so it doesn't have this kind of protection, which makes it, of course, more vulnerable. These are the sorts of things that are eventually going to catch up with us, and there are ways to take care of the problem. There are ways to remove this debris from orbit, and some of it is going to deorbit itself if eventually anyway. However, that being the case, if we keep making this problem worse, there's no way we're ever going to be rid of it, and ultimately it will result in a cataclysm that will end all spaceflight in low Earth orbit for the foreseeable future. We are at 89,692 subscribers, just over 300 away from 90,000 and on the home stretch to 100k. Please subscribe or get your family members, your friends, your dog to subscribe. I don't give a damn. Subscribe! And please check the description for ways to support this content. Please like this video as well. And as always, stay angry about space!